You know, I want to ask you, before we begin this morning, I want to ask you a question. We've been talking about this month, we've been talking about follow me, speaking of Jesus. So, you know, following Jesus, becoming a disciple, doing the kind of things that God wants you to do. The things that I, I want to ask you this morning, what are some of the things that you think follow? What are things that follow? You know, things that follow like a baby elephant, does it follow its mother? What, what kind of things really follow? Does anybody have an idea about something that follows? Raise your hand if that's true. You have something that follows? Please, please. Uh, Justin's going to come by and, and, and ask you about that. What's, uh, what I'm interested in is I'm interested in, um, in finding all of the things that follow because if we can understand the things that follow, then we can find out what it means to really follow. So, uh, David, why don't you tell us the kind of things that, that you think really follow? Well, the first thing that came to my mind was uh, train cars. Uh, um, well, train cars on train a train cars. track, they yeah. follow. I mean, they're kind of coupled to each other. You know, that's, that's pretty good. What, what, is there something else that you think really follows? Somebody else have an idea of what do you think follows? Day and night. So, pardon me? Day and night. Day and night. I mean, you know, day and night. Night follows day. Day follows night. I mean, that. Children. That was awesome. <laughs> what did you say? Children. Children follow? That, you know what? That, Barb, that is so optimistic. That's why we love you. <laughs> we love you so much because you're just so... You're just so positive. Rachel, what, what do you think? Ants. Ants? <coughs> Not uncles, just ants. <laughs> ants. Ants follow. You know, that's really true. How many have you, you know, even the Bible tells us that really you need to follow, to take a look at the ant. He doesn't have any... Uh, he doesn't have any captain, overseer, or ruler, but what he does is he stores up his food for the winter time. He said, take a look at the ant. He said, you lazy bones. He said, just take a look at, at that. So, okay, there's ants that follow. A ducklings follow the mother duck. Say that again. Ducklings follow the mother duck. <laughs> ducklings yes. follow the mother duck? How many of you have ever had to stop your car when there have been ducklings walking across this? It's true, isn't it? I mean, really, you're kind of sitting there. You're thinking, come on, you little ducklings. You could be wearing a tire tread right now. You know, you could be wearing a tire tread. Just get, wah, 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 get across the street. Get across the street. Yes. Um, my dogs follow me around the house all the time. Your dogs follow you around the house? They need prayer. <laughs> no, dogs follow, you know, dogs follow people. You know, that's really true, that the loyalty in, in, in dogs, somebody else? Good examples or bad examples, people will follow. Good examples or bad examples. That's pretty interesting. Things follow. Come on back up, Justin. We have these two individuals. Don't, I'm, don't you give up. I'm coming right over there. Peggy. Consequences. Oh, that was, that was low, Peggy. <laughs> that was low. You heard that last night, consequences. Oh, gosh. Consequences. Wow. Truth or consequences? Deers follow each other. Say that again. Deer. Years follow each other? Deer. <laughs> that's true that's so true it's so good so good seed time and harvest seed time and harvest that that you know okay now don't you guys get religious on me now seasons seasons spring will follow See? winter Sp springs on its way yes. can you say glory to god yes. amen it's really true that's really true. People follow leaders. People follow leaders? Well, that's another one of those hopeful things. You and Barb have been spending time together. You know, that's one of those, those things. And we'll finish up with John. Yeah. 
Interesting, interesting. John? Sheep follow their shepherd. Sheep follow the shepherd. Well, you know, a lot of times they do or they get broken legs. You know, it's kind of like, it's, it's really what happens. It's, how many of you have ever watched National Geographic? Did you ever watch National Geographic? Okay, how about the Discovery Channel? Okay, and then, and then there's another um, Animal Planet. Do you like that? Uh, do, you, do you know the, the programs that become so telling is what the programs of when you begin to see the animals, they're all moving in the herd, everything is really good, and then all of a sudden what happens is one of them begins to stray. It's almost like you know exactly where the program's going. This is going, and, and then you look at the, at, at the name of the program, and it's called Big Cats in the Serengeti. And you're thinking, this is not about Cape Buffalo. This is about the cat. So the cat's on its way, and things are going to be kind of tough. And that happens. But what about Jesus? When Jesus said, follow me, what really was Jesus saying to us? Now, there's a lot of chatter, 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 chatter everywhere about what's supposed to happen with a person and how they're supposed to feel and how all of those things are supposed to go on in their lives. What, what really is following Jesus all about? See, because... How many of you love your children? Do you love your children? How many of you hate your kids? We should start there. How many, because then we can start trying to fix a couple things about it. I just hate them kids. I just, no, no, you just can't, you can't hate them. You can, how many of you at times would, would have, um, now nah, forget that too. We can't go there. I, I think I'll think something else here. But how many of you, in the beginning of really trying to teach them something, you had a lot of real grace as they were learning, didn't you? You had a lot of grace. I mean, it's kind of like, you know, just take it, you know, hey, d do this, and, you know, now you handle this, and then all of a sudden a day goes by, or two days go by, and all of a sudden what happens is, is that, you know, things don't really happen like they should. But then finally, after a little while, although you love them, and although you have a tremendous amount of grace toward them, yet at the same time, even though you love them, you really want them to begin to follow, don't you? And Jesus said in John 15 too, it, it's interesting how Jesus said this. He said, every branch in me that doesn't bear fruit, uh, it's going to be taken away. And every branch that bears fruit, he said, I'm going to make it better. How many of you... How many of you actually have seen a rose bush that was purged? I mean, really. I mean, you, do, it, you know, it was, okay, let's use the, another word you might understand, pruned. How many of you have ever seen a rose bush that was pruned? How do you think that rose bush felt? Do you think that he was going to be really kind of like growing any fruit? Or, or coming by and giving you any beautiful blossoms anytime in the near future, that rose bush, when they were putting those scissors, those pruning shears to that rose bush, that rose bush is going, don't you come over by me. Don't you even, no, 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 don't, don't, don't just, don't do that. He said, no, 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 what we need to do is we need to do this because if we do it, then you're going to bear more you know, you're going to have more blossoms next year. They're going to be fuller. They're going to be more fragrant. You're really going to be able to grow. And this rose bush never thought for a moment that that was going to happen. As a matter of fact, their idea wasn't that the person that had the shears loved them. The person that had the shears actually hated them. Interesting, isn't it? So he said here, he said now, verse number two, once again, he said that in every branch that bears fruit, he prunes it that it may bring forth more fruit. So each and every one of us, we've had an experience with God. 
We've had this experience, this encounter. We actually went to Jesus and we said, Jesus Christ, I make you the Lord of my life. I really want, how many of you believe in Jesus? You believe in Jesus? I mean, really, you believe Jesus Christ died for your sins. Do you believe that? Amen. He died for me. Jesus died for you. Jesus paid the price so that you could live. He has distributed his grace upon you. But apparently that means I needed it. So if I needed grace, glory to God, Jesus gave it to me. And I'm so excited to have been the recipient of this grace that Jesus so lavishly had spread upon my life. But now what happens next? We've received Jesus as the Lord of our lives. How many of you enjoyed when you got saved? You, you just kind of like, you really enjoyed. The moment you came to Christ, you thought, oh, my sins are passed away. I've been forgiven. Oh, praise the Lord. I've been forgiven by his word. The chains of sin have broken. I've been forgiven. I've been forgiven. Songs have been written about those things kind of like forever. But now what happens next? Where do I go from here? Where do I go from the place of, of getting saved, coming to Christ, becoming a follower of Jesus, or actually becoming a son of God? Where does my life end? Because, I, you know, I got saved in a mental institution, and when I came to Christ... It absolutely changed my life, tremendously transformed me as a person. I was so excited, so happy, so blessed. I was, I was really, really an absolutely 100% different individual the next day after I came to Christ. People then thought I was crazy. Up until that point, they thought that I was just, I felt a little depressed. Maybe I need a little help. You know, just medicate, you know, just a little bit more. But after that, they thought, oh, you needed a crutch, so you use Jesus as your crutch. You needed, you know, you need religion. We don't need religion. You need religion. You need that thing. You, you need it, but, you know, we don't need it. But you see, you have to realize this. I knew that even the moment that I came to Christ, I knew that God was calling me to something different. That you have a getting on point with Jesus, but there's also another point. And it's the point of where you go on with God. The Apostle Paul said it like this in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse number 9. He said, who has saved us and called us? Say, God has called me. With a holy calling, not according to my works, but according to his own purpose. Boy, let's say that again. God has saved me and called me. God has saved me and I am called. See, once you understand that you're called, are you kidding me? You are called by God. God has called you. People in the ministry aren't the people that are called. Every person in life that has, has made Jesus Christ the king of their heart, that person has a calling. But then the Apostle Paul, he goes on, in Philippians chapter 3, verse number 14, Jesus said, or actually Paul said about Jesus, he said, I press toward the mark for the, cry, for the prize of the high calling of God. He called me. Say, God called me. You see, Jesus gave his, his followers, he gave them three commissions. You know, a lot of times what happens is people think that there's only been one commission, that the, it's been the great commission, but there's really actually three commissions that Jesus gave his followers. Here's number one. The first one here, his first commission, really, it comes out of Matthew chapter 9, verse number 37 and 38. There he said to his disciples, he said, the harvest truly is plentiful. He said, but the laborers are few. He said, pray ye, he said, that the Lord of the harvest will send out laborers into his harvest. So go back to verse 37. He said, there, he said to his disciples, say, Jesus is saying to me, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. 
My commission commission is prayer prayer. and to go out out and harvest harvest. his harvest. harvest. That's the first commission that God gave us. It's a commission of harvest. We need to harvest the people that he has called. The second commission that Jesus gave us, take a look, comes out of Matthew chapter 10, verse number 7. He said, and as you go, he said, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, here is the reason why that's important. Look at verse 8. He said, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. See, that's what you're called to do. Say, I'm called. With the holy calling. calling. So here's your calling right here. Heal the sick. Okay, say it. I am going to heal the sick. I am going to cleanse the lepers. I'm going to raise the dead. I'm going to cast out devils. Because freely I have received. And freely I will now give. You see, whatever God gave you, that's what you give. How many devils did he deliver you from? Okay, when you say none, then you just ask me if I agree. (laughs) But then the third commission was a commission that all of us know. Take a look at verse 18. He said, all authority has been given unto me out of Matthew 28. He said, now go. Everyone say go. Go. He said, go into all the world. He said, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of, a, of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe whatsoever I have commanded you. He said, and lo, he said, I am with you always, even unto the end of the age. Let's go back to verse 19 and make our declaration. He said, I will, I will go into all my world, I will go into all my world. And, I will teach them. and I will teach them. I will see them baptized, see them baptized. in the name of the Father, the of the Father. and of the Son, And of the Holy Ghost, I will teach them to observe whatever, whatever he has commanded. And I know that he will be with me always, even to the end of the age. Now go back to verse number 18 again. Let's take a look. He said, all power has been given unto me. Then what did he say for them to do? Now, remember, Jesus sees everything as an extension of his Father. Everything is an extension. Jesus didn't do anything on his own. Jesus didn't do anything in his name. Jesus didn't do anything except as an extension of his relationship with his Father. But look at verse 19. He said, now, teaching all nations. Teaching all nations. Another translation says, making disciples of all nations. Well, what do you mean? I'm not really supposed to make converts anymore. What I'm supposed to do is I'm to make disciples out of people. I think a lot of times what happens is you can have children, but if you don't teach them how to become adults, you still have what? Children. Children. That's the reason why we have some people that are 35, 38, 40 years old still living in the basement. And know what they call them? The what? The basement what? The basement boys. Those are the basement boys, not the pet boys. It's the basement boys. The basement boys live down in mom's basement because what happened was, was that they never grew up. They never came to the place to where what they did was that they actually said, okay, now I'm a man. And now I need to set up my home. Now I need to be able to find a wife, which I will find a good thing. Ladies, say this. I am am a good thing. thing. (laughs) Well, let's say it like you mean it. I am am a good thing. thing. Well, that's good. Because he that finds a wife finds a what? And he obtains favor from the Lord. So that's the truth. He's obtaining favor from the Lord. So here, you need to realize something. What does it mean then to follow? What does it mean to follow? St. Gregory said this. 
he, he actually said, God never intended distinction between being a Christian and being a disciple. There's never an intention of being, you know, only being a person who was a Christian. One of the most frustrating things you can ever have in your life is being a Christian but never being a disciple. That's where guilt and where shame come from. That's where the lack of fulfillment and, and not really becoming what you want to become, that's where its birthplace is. Is that the moment when I became a believer, someplace, somewhere, somehow, I stopped following. And instead of speaking into my future by my progress, I began to listen to my past because I stood still. The moment you become a disciple is the moment that things change. Because you have a commander in your army. That commander is responsible for everything that you do. That commander is interested in seeing you achieve the greatest things that you can ever achieve in your life. It doesn't matter where you came from, you now have a new uniform. It doesn't matter what you have faced, you now wear the colors of the king. It doesn't matter what you've done, you now have been forgiven and you have been protected and your future is now determined by the leader that you follow. It's not determined by the one who had your past. The next thing that we know about discipleship, take a look and see what, and see what Oswald Chambers wrote in the book, one of the greatest books of all time, that is called My Utmost for His Highest. See what he said right here. He said, our work begins where God's grace has laid the foundation. We're not to save souls, but to disciple them. One life wholly yielded to God is of more value to God than a hundred lives simply awakened by His Spirit. God brings us to a standard of life by His grace, and we are responsible for reproducing that same standard in others. Oswald Chambers, he said, follow me. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Do you know most people don't sing that saved a wretch like me? About 25 years ago, those words changed. They said, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved someone like me. You see, I have no problem in admitting my past when I realize how amazing my future will become. I will not try to kid you about yesterday. I will live the rest of my life convincing you about tomorrow. Do you know, most of the people, it's really funny, most of the people, and I, I, I went to school here, and you know, high school here and all, and still people from my high school are waiting for me to give up Christianity. I've been a Christian since a little bit after I got out of high school. And still, they're waiting for me to say, they're still saying things like, it's not going to last. It, it won't last. No, it's not going to last. Don't, don't worry about it. It's not going to last. Well, if you hold your breath much longer, you've got to be a different color than, what you, than when you started out. But in Luke chapter 14, Jesus said this about following him. In verse number 26, he said, if you want to be my follower, you need to love me more than everyone around you. Do you know that unless I loved Jesus more than I loved my mom, unless I loved Jesus more than I loved my mother, my mother would never be able to benefit from my relationship with Jesus. If you love people more than you love God, God will get the love. The greatest thing God could ever get is the love that you give to people. But if you love God 
more than you love people, then people will get the love that you give to God. And so Jesus is saying, look, you need to love me more than you love anything else. If you love me more than you love anything else, everything else is going to work itself out. Don't worry about it. But now notice what he said in verse number 28. He said, in verse 28, please. He said, but don't begin until you count the cost. Don't start following me. He said, because you got to first count the cost. Because it's going to look for a while there like things aren't going to really be the way you want them to be. He said, for who would begin construction of a building without first getting the estimates and then checking to see if there's enough money to pay the bills? Otherwise, you might complete only the foundation before you started running out of money. How many of you ever did something, you wanted to achieve something, but you started running out of money? That ever happened to you? Okay, all liars, raise your hand right now. <laughs> See, because it does, it happens to all of us, doesn't it? I mean, we start something and we think, you know what, I'll tell you. Um, I started out wanting the best of something. I know this is true for me. Started wanting the best, but then all of a sudden finding out to get the best was going to be a bit more than I thought I would be able to handle. So then you start thinking, well, you know, you don't really need to have the best. I'll tell you what, there are so many other things out there that are almost as good. It's almost as good. Jesus said, no, don't go there. He said, but first, what you need to do is sit down and count the cost. And when you count the cost, just remember that in counting the cost, that is what you're after. Simply enough, friends, following Jesus in the beginning, in the beginning, believing in him didn't cost me very much. But following him cost me everything that I had. So the question for us is this. What does it cost us to follow Jesus? Has it really cost us anything yet? Or have we been trying to really kind of begin to wholesale our relationship with the Lord? Are we trying to see how little that we need to do in order to have what we want? Or are we at a place where we're willing to say, I have decided to follow him. I'm going to follow him wherever he leads me, wherever he takes me. Whatever he says to me, I am going to follow him. Let's bow our heads and let's pray together today because today isn't about becoming a Christian. Today is about following Him. That is, there's something. Is there something in your life that he's been putting his finger on to keep you or something he's been putting his finger on to have you give that part of your life to him that part is there something you've been holding back something that you know that will keep you from becoming what, he's want, what he wants you to become. In just a moment, I'm just going to ask you to put up your hand because you're ready to follow in a way that you've never followed before. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you that you would touch your people. That you would touch your people. Help them, Father. Love them. Draw them by your mercy. Draw them by your grace. Amazing grace that you have forgiven them. That there's not anything that they can do in order to earn anything from you. 
It's your grace. You're calling them to walk in your grace. If you know that there's something in your heart that you're now willing to give to the Lord to follow Him, I want you to stand where you are. Let me pray with you. Because it's time. No more will you have to deal with this. This is now coming out of your life. I believe that this is, this is going to be the end of it. This is going to be the end of it. This is going to be the end of it. This will be the end of it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There are actually approximately 30 more of you that you know the Lord's touched you and you know that it's time for you to respond. Could you please? Could you please? Thank you. 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 God's going to deliver you. You don't need to think that, you know, I've been through this before. I, I'm not. I guess I must not be sincere. No, God's going to deliver you. You need to hear that. God is going to deliver you. He's going to deliver you. He is going to deliver you. Someone else. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Anyone else? Praise the Lord. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to rain down on your people. May your love sweep over them, your forgiveness and your grace. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Say this after me, my Father. I confess to you. Now you tell him what you're confessing. Don't tell me. Tell him. Say this after me. This is sin, my Father. I want to thank you for forgiving me and for cleansing me because Jesus paid the price for me. From this moment forward, I will walk in my righteousness. My righteousness that you gave to me. In Jesus' mighty name. I glorify you. With my body. And with my spirit. Which belongs to you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Say this after me. I let it go. I let it go. I won't hold on to this anymore. It is not security to me. Thank you, Father. For loving me. Thank you, 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Why don't you all stand with me, please? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Just remain in that same attitude. Let's just begin to worship Him. Worship Him, worship Him, worship Him. Worship Him, just worship Him, just worship Him. Oh, Jesus, we worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. We worship you, Lord. We worship you. We worship you, Lord. We worship you. We worship you, Lord. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you. Glory, glory, glory to God. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, we worship you, Lord. We worship your name. We're so grateful. We're just so grateful to you, Father. We are so grateful to you. We are so grateful to you, Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. We worship your name. We worship your name. We worship your name. We worship your name. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Glory, 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 glory to God. Hey, glory to Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to the Lamb of God. Oh, Jesus, we worship you today. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to the Lamb of God. We bless your name. 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 Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, we bless you. Oh, Jesus, we praise your name. You are exalted. You're exalted, Lord. You're exalted, Lord. Oh, Jesus, you're exalted. We worship you, Jesus. We worship your name. We worship your name. We worship your name. We worship your name. We worship, 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 worship your name. We worship your name. We worship you. Glory, 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 glory. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Say this after me. In the name of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. I am who God said I am. I can do what God said I can do. I have what God said I have. I break the chains. I break the chains. I destroy every hindrance. Everything that wants to hold me back. I break the power of influence. Negative influence in my life. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I am blessed because he said I'm blessed. I am healed because he said I'm healed. Finances, finances, finances are coming to me in the name of Jesus Christ because he is my king. I am not the king. I submit to my Father's throne in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. 
In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. It is only. It is only by the name of Jesus. In the book of Acts chapter 3. When the disciples were brought before the Pharisees and the Sanhedrin once again. And they said, in whose name did you do what you've just done? And the apostle Peter said this. He said, if you think that it was by some strange thing that this happened in the presence of you all. He said, be it known unto you that in the name of Jesus Christ and by his blood has this man become strong. Your power, my dearests, is not in your education. Your power is not in your ability. Your power is not in your thoughts. The power that you have in life has been given to you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thoughts must bow their knees. Situations must dissolve. Problems must pass away. In the name of Jesus. Because we walk by what? And not by? Say, I walk by faith. I don't walk by sight. I walk by faith. And not by sight. And one more time. I walk by faith. And not by sight. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Justin, welcome Justin as he comes. Come on, Justin.